Imagery. Imagery is powerful. I could say the sun came up today, or in a more imaginative way. I could say, I heard a loud voice saying, Awake! Rise from the grave, you guardian of the day, and extend your burning arms to touch the realm of men. That's kind of like the book of Revelation. Revelation is brimming with imagery. I mean, John doesn't just write a narrative. He gives us a picture book. He invites us to see what he sees, to experience what he experiences, to use our senses through his writing. And so he gives us visions and symbols and numbers and colors and vivid pictures to reveal a behind the scenes view, a back lot, heavenly perspective on our earthly experience. And so he uses things like rainbow covered thrones and dragons and bowls of judgment and grotesque creatures and marks on foreheads. Revelation can be challenging. It can be confusing, but it wasn't meant to be. Now we're about to launch into a sermon series in the book of Revelation. And I hope to make the complicated simple, to make the overwhelming understandable. We're not used to this kind of, of literature in the Bible. What is it? Is it a letter? Is it a prophecy? An apocalypse? Yeah, it's all three of these things. It is a letter. It was written by a specific person to specific people at a specific time. And we need to read it understanding that context. It's also a prophecy. John calls it a prophecy. Now, a prophecy not so much in, this is what is coming, but thus says the Lord. Pay attention. Hear this truth. Let it encourage and exhort you. It is a letter. It is a prophecy. And it's also what we call an apocalypse, which is an unveiling, an uncovering, where John pulls back the curtain to this unseen reality, saying there's more to reality than perhaps what you're seeing. Let me show it to you. And so John shows us a reality in a very, very imaginative way. He reveals truth to us in this fantastic, artistic, poetic way. Let's face it, the words John uses paint new pictures. They're new pictures of old truths. He alludes to the Old Testament writings over 500 times in Revelation. And we need to see those symbols and visions and pictures, the allusions to the Old Testament, as hyperlinks. As if, if I click on that, it will take me back to a place where I will find an explanation. And in that way, Revelation is not so much this secret code to unlock the unfolding of tomorrow's events, but it's more so a sacred promise that Jesus has overcome, and so will his people. So, no new truth in Revelation that was not already in the previous 65 books of the Bible. There's just the unchanging ancient truth revealed in a new way. Eugene Peterson, in his book on Revelation called Reverse Thunder, says, I read Revelation not to get more information, but to revive my imagination. So the series in the book of Revelation that we are about to launch into, it may not fill out every chart or spreadsheet or explain every single symbol that's in the book of Revelation. It may not fill those charts, but what I do hope it does is fill your heart. I hope it fills your heart with comfort and with courage to persevere and follow Jesus. Let's remember, John gives us a picture book, not a puzzle book. It's a picture of Jesus who defeats evil and makes all things new. Revelation answers the question the persecuted church asks. When the persecuted church is going through trial and tribulation and difficulty, and they've been told the kingdom of God has come near, they ask, but where is God now? Where is Jesus 
in all of this? And Revelation's vivid imagery gives an answer. Jesus has overcome evil, and so will his people. We will see that truth over and over, stamped upon every picture, stamped upon every image in John's writing. We will see the truth that Jesus has overcome evil, and so will his people in the Son of Man who speaks to his churches. We will see it in the sacrificed lamb who is worthy to open the seals of the scroll. We will see it in the warnings of God through horsemen, through plagues. We will see it in the witness of God's people who have been sealed against his wrath. We will see it in the cosmic battle where dragon and beast and false prophet are cast down. We will see it in the fall of Babylon's world empire on the great day of the Lord. We will see it in the return and the reign of the king. We will see it in the new heaven and the new earth, the dawning of the restoration of Eden. There are a lot of ways to interpret Revelation. Various lenses to look through. There are the preterist view and the historicist view, the futurist view, the idealist view. The preterist view says this whole account describes what happened in the first century only. It's like a postcard from a bygone era. The historicist view says, no, this is a timeline of all events that have happened throughout the history of the church. It's more like a a photo album from the past to the present. And the futurist view will say all of this still remains to happen. It's like a brochure of upcoming events. And then there's the idealist view. The idealist view says, Revelation is a general depiction of the sovereignty of God and the struggle of God's people at any given time. Now, there is no doubt that we can point to first century events and see their them as a fulfillment of what happens in Revelation. There is no doubt that we could look throughout all the events of history and find decent candidates for what's happening in Revelation. And I am certain that the future will also have events that will fit the bill. But more importantly, What does God want to say to us, his people? What does he want to say to Centerpoint? What enduring truth is found in this book for us right now? And for that reason, I'm calling our approach to the book of Revelation a pastoral approach. Embracing the ideal of God's timeless truth and enduring encouragement for us while allowing room for reflection on views past, present, and future. So we will approach Revelation from a pastoral perspective. Our goal throughout will be encouragement in the midst of difficulty and exhortation to persevere in tribulation. And this will be accomplished by repeatedly saying, look, listen, behold, Jesus, the King, is on the throne. He has overcome evil, and so will his people. Even so, we say, Come, Lord Jesus. To help us on our journey through the book of Revelation, we have made these scripture journals available. You can purchase them at the church. They have the scripture on one side, and then a place where you can write notes on the other side, just like I've done here. We also have a reading plan available to you. Um, You can go to our website on the homepage, you'll see the link to it. There you could download a hard copy, or if you have the church app, you will get a notification, if your notifications are on, every day starting September 4th, that will give you a small portion of Revelation to read, along with one question that hopefully will help us understand Revelation even more and apply it to our lives. I'm excited about this journey with you. May God use it to teach us that he overcomes evil, and so will we, his people.